So, Alex, you're the caller tonight. What happened last time? Let's see. Last time we succeeded in collecting the last of the rune stones we needed. We did a little bit more investigating to allay some of our concerns as to whether or not there was any evil afoot with the... What we call... We wouldn't call them the rune priests. What would we refer to them as? Just... Uh, the seers? The seers, seers. yeah. A brolog. Seers of brolog, yes. We, we decided that they had really good mutton. Once once again, the mutton was good, so, you know, they must be pretty great guys. Uh, we got on our vessel and sailed west. We kind of we kind of were trying to figure out where the Sea King's cave was. We discovered where it was, and we also ended up having some tagalongs from from the settlement that we originally got our ship from. Uh, I believe they that settlement flies the green the green flag, the green colors, I believe. And they came with us. We went into the t we went to the tomb. We used our rune stones to open it up, and our allies along with us immediately clashed with the other group who was there at the entrance and so wasting no time we delved deeper into the caves we found something started following us i remember that we took care of it later but uh found a huge ship and the ship started floating once we brought it to water i believe like it was floating in the air if i recall but we followed it through we met the entity that referred to itself as the sea king and following on his guidance we went even deeper and he he told us that we needed to kill his blood kill kill what blood of his remained in the world as it had betrayed the others and we saved some, we saved some sirens. At least that's what I got written down, that they're like, that they were like sirens, but they were more green, creepy sorts of, sorts of individuals. Uh, they, they gave us, they gave Skalg, I believe Skalg received this. Skalg received a cloak which would let him turn invisible and aid in hiding. And... We were just on the cusp of discovering who the people are that are in the next room, which we believe to be, you know, where the finale of this is, where we are going to well, kill the blood, kill the remaining descendant of the Sea King. Nice. Yes. So here you are. Um... <laughs> I was I was scrolling to zoom in and then he pressed a button and went zoop. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you have these uh, sea nymph allies and you uh, are in the the frozen waters on the shore. Um, you can see. Well, I think I moved it so you can see ahead. You can see people. Four wolfish humans with red shields. You know this to be the, uh, the colors of Gandrun. Um, the, uh, the clan, the tribe that you came to keep the axe from. And young woman with black hair. Uh, steely, young, and confident. Um, she has a... Uh, winged helm and she kneels and is drawing a diagram in the sand there are four other humans around her two men well three men and one woman a man with rune tattoos covered in muscle an old man with a fatherly appearance and a gray beard a woman with red hair that looks as if she might explode into uh, a scream at any moment and another incredibly muscled smiling handsome young man 
Um, what's the plan? Gerd, what do you do? Hmm. Well, lads, I think we're gonna smash some skulls in, aren't we? Provided, at least if we, if us three are in agreement that these are people we wanna, we wanna off now that we're, we're here, nobody, nobody will see it happen. I mean, they might not be, but they also are now. <laughs> I, I think it would be an insult to our ancestors to suffer them to live any longer. Agreed, agreed. How... How should we go about this? I think, uh... We could just... We, we could go blood-curdling screams in there and chop away at them. Uh, hopefully catch them off guard, but if we scowl uh, with that magic item you received last time, maybe you could sneak up and listen in on them? But do we even do we even care what the heck it is they're up to? I, I, I don't feel like we do. Uh, I have a I have a question. What's this, uh, uh, this passageway in between us and them? Approximately how wide is it? How many p persons abreast could fit in there? That's a good question. Um, two persons abreast, but not fighting distance. You know, if you have big axes or two-handed weapons, um, so you wouldn't be able to fight in there. If you're going to fight, it'd be one, one at a time. I wonder, do we have anything we could use to try to flush them out? I, I don't think we have anything, unfortunately, but do you guys have any ideas for that? Well, uh, we have something that they don't, which is honor and self-respect. And if we pointed that out to them, they may be compelled to come and kill us. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Ooh. On that idea, wait, we do have these women who kind of, maybe if they have powers similar to a siren, maybe they could draw, they could draw some of these guys out. That's a good, that's a, that's an, 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 uh, inspired. That's what I was looking for. You want them to try to sing a, a siren song? Yeah, maybe we, we fill our we fill our ears with like cloth and wax so we don't hear the song and then these sirens try to draw them out. Whoever comes through give them a good thwack to the back of the neck. Okay, they arrange themselves to do that. Great 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 ancestor uh, Valgarder also um, the seventh he, he <laughs> told me of a battle where they did a horse shoe. Why was it a horse shoe? They lined up like horseshoe, and then the people, when they came in, they killed them. <laughs> With horseshoes, I imagine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that I, I see, I see the, I see the, the, the wisdom behind this horseshoe formation. Mm -hmm. That is a good idea. It said that almost is acceptable in those circumstances. And he kind of looks sad. Ah, oh, we. Uh, we did not bring horses. That's okay. We're we're we're, as, we're we're we have men as strong as horses here with us. We'll kick just like them. That's uh, well said. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Um. Gameplay. Surprise. Okay. So they're going to try to sing. You can move your tokens in a formation if you choose. Uh, certainly as, so, as you're I waiting for them to do that. control over half damp, it would appear. Uh-oh. Oops, Oops that's my Let going. me delete that. I'll delete that. I'm, I had a wrong button selected. Sorry, I don't mean to keep doing that. I'm trying to move my guy. I keep making it <laughs> All right, I'll move. <clears throat> Caleb, you'll be up there at the top. Or whatever, you know. Horseshoe, though. <laughs> Vorn is behind the garter so that he can stop making 
it, I think my vague and my vague hope was to put Skjalg behind Hafton. Because one of them is much squishier than the other. I could do the old too deep. You could get behind one, one of my characters if you want. They're definitely that cool. Yeah, feel feel free to get behind one of uh, to get behind like Alvar. Both him and Gerd are really really tough individuals. All right, let's call that vaguely uh, except for Vorn will stab over Valgarda's shoulder and shoulder Valgarda just. DC twelve as usual. They fail, so they are not stealthy and they are not surprised. So. The next thing is they each get a chance to win at initiative. <clears throat> Combat initiative. Uh, this will be the person with the highest result takes the first turn. Sorry, Caleb. Um, everyone makes a dexterity check. And then I'll shuffle in. It doesn't say this, but person with highest result. GM uses highest dexterity. So, yeah, you guys can go ahead and... Um, uh, <clears throat> basically, whoever wins will start with you, but then we'll go around. But I'll also see if the monsters beat you. So okay. she got a one, so they are going to go last. And who got the highest initiative, and did you beat an 18? No. I think I got, uh... So it looks like Valgarder actually got the highest, so you'll go first. And then uh, <clears throat> it'll actually be uh, sirens. All right, so all of this starts to go down then. Um, so first of all, uh, they start to line up to sing, and you see her look, and she sees them, and she, she yells, and she's like, Stop your ears and grab your weapons. They're back. And uh, sadly, they are able to act first. And she yells. And she says, Kin to me. And um, you hear footsteps off in the dark. Um, and um, let's see here. Rage once per day. So she's going to do that. And she's going to cast a spear right away. She misses. And these people are going to form a shield wall. So they go up and move and form a shield wall blocking the way in. And then the other two a great axe. Um, they have used their range weapon, so that's it for now. They have to be close. Uh, you see her um, nod to one of them and they run off. Oh, I'm going for reinforcements, maybe. And, uh, let's see... Um, I think that's their turn. So we're at Steve. What do you do? Okay. Um, not much he can do, but uh, Vorn is. She's going gonna run to too, actually. Use uh, Prince. Someone call her a coward, just like her ancestors. <laughs> it's odd. Yeah, she just runs. Lorne's going to use Trance on Velgarder and give him a luck token. Um, and Velgarder's just going to kind of hold his ground because there's not a whole lot they can do. All right. Um, and then he's going to start hurling insults about that uh, their whole tribe and how they... Uh, um, Are, are secretly followers of the of, of uh, the light and do unseemly things with uh, uns they do unseemly things. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was Volgarder and uh, and Vorn. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gerd and his companion, his kin. Uh, 
I guess we're gonna have to just wait here and hope the sirens succeed on their stuff. Alright. So, yeah. Hold it still. Uh, scowl. I guess we'll, we'll do a shield wall. I, I will say that we will we'll do a shield wall in case anything unexpected comes our way. Alright. Yeah, what's the what's the enemy up to? Did they successfully stop stop up their ears? Do they seem like they'll be resistant to our? Uh, our it does. It, it does look like they're doing something like that. Yeah. And then you all said that you did as well. Poor sirens don't have an audience. Yeah. <laughs> this one, kinda... this one secret trick destroys all sea nymphs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've got the numbers advantage so we should press it, but I'll, I'll stick with the rest of the group and, uh, and shield wall it up and sort of hold, uh, hold fast. All right. Um, very well. Let's see. Um, your ears are stoppered up and so you do not hear what happens next as uh, groups of them start to emerge from the water from behind you. What? Well then. Those sneaky peats. They've moved uh, with uh, great speed. We're surrounded. They can't get away now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, uh, let's see. They do have a chance to... No. Yeah, their ears are stoppered. Even but they, though they emerged from the water, the water didn't remove their ear stop bridge. <clears throat> so they, uh, they went around and then waited uh, and then took a... Um, uh, I, I said that basically because your ears are stopped and they're out of range, uh, but they, they listened to noise... Um, they om they made it only part of the way, but then they um, they listened. Uh, because your ears are stopped, did a dexterity check, which is what's required for a surprise round, at advantage. So I still gave them a chance to fail. They succeeded, and now here they are. So they're arriving on uh, their actual round, uh, but they moved on. But they moved, and then now this is their surprise round. So, well, gentlemen, it was. And it will continue to be. <laughs> uh, I suppose nine misses, right, Born? Oh, yes. Uh, does a 16 hit half them? Uh, he's shield walled, so no. There we go. All right. And... Nice. Nat nice. one misses. I like how it just didn't roll the damage. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> smart system. Uh, pretty sure that misses. So they rise. They rise up from the water. Uh, Skog does a seventeen hit. Why do you have to roll on the, well, on the one person who will die? Yes, it hits. Uh, Skog takes six damage. Ow. And a 13 does not hit Halvar, right? Oh, he's shield walled. You need a 20, good sir. All right. Uh, let's see. That is their turn, uh, except they're also going to move. Uh, but to fight, they're going to move single file, but he's going to do it so that they can push in. So he's going to use his turn to attack, and he misses. All right. Uh, let's see. That brings us to Steve Volgerder right. and... Born. Born's gonna move over here so that he can attack this dude over these. You have That's, a spear? Yeah. And then okay. Valgarder's gonna go ham on this fella. Alright. So, Valgarder, uh, come on, man. Uh, Oof. Uh, maybe, should I use his luck now? Yeah, I think I'll use his luck now. Uh, try that d20 again. That misses by one. You have to hit AC 15. Wait, do I have that cool thing with Freya? I do. I get to, I get to add a D6 to that. Nice. 
Boop. Yay! That hits. So I guess it was... Oh, both times it was nine damage. All right. Nine damage, uh... To you're... this fella. To... Oh, that's to him. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, to him and then Born. Wait, describe oh. how you kill him. Oh, um... So when Vorn moves behind him and then all excitedly he kind of like waddles up to that guy and just goes straight down, plunk, onto the top of the head and then kicks him off the axe and looks at the next guy and goes... <laughs> yeah, he falls back, his cleaved head bleeding, pouring out into the water. And uh, yeah, you look at the next guy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and Vorn. You said he had a spear, um, right? Yeah, Vorn missed. He only got it. Oh, gotcha. Me. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Alex. All right. Gerd yells out, First blood has been drawn. <laughs> Gerd, if Gerd can, he'd like to fit in kind of here. Yeah, you can fit. Halvar. Okay, yeah. We're going to we're gonna get to either either side of Skalg, and we're going to try to get as many of the many of these uh contenders off him as possible so i'll start with gird the tech here fingers crossed come on ah, if i won you know what i'm this is a scary round i'm gonna spend the luck i'm gonna spend the point of luck that he's got every roll of this I believe target number is 15. Does a 17 connect? Uh, does a 17? Yes, it does. It could. Awesome. Let's see. Gerd deals 13 points of damage. To, to uh, <clears throat> this one right here? Yes, sir. Des describe how you kill that one, person. As he, as that guy's trying to, like pull up to Skurg and like grab at Skurg's cloak and swing at him. Gerd steps into the side and throws the man down on his back and drives his blade in deep. He falls back onto the frozen shore as well. Oops, sorry for all the pings. Uh, anybody else on your turn? Yes, Halvar's gonna swing at uh, an odd looking lady here on the furthest left. That 19. Hits. Five points. You hear her howl in pain as uh, as your uh, your weapon slices into her, and you hear <clears throat> tendon and uh, tissue and bones crack and tendon rip open uh, like fabric. And uh, let's see, that brings us to Caleb. Oh boy! All right. Well. Turntables have turntabled a bit, and so I would like to, to take advantage of this this initiative that we've gained. I being scout to turn invisible. Yeah. All right. You turn invisible. <laughs> and now we've got this nice juicy break in the line. I would like to go uh, to approximately okay, there. You do so that. They, I want to block off the exit a bit. Stand right, right behind the enemies, so that escape becomes impossible. All right. Nice. And uh, then I got uh, half Captain, and he's got this guy touching him. So I guess that it, that guy should die for the offense. And that would be press this button and this button. That would be this roll. Ooh, Oof. I fail. Crud. Ah. All right, let's see. The sirens, they're going to uh, um, try to do a regular attack, slash attack. A 16 hits for four. Um, a 17 hits for five. One more. And he bravely stands. <clears throat> Given what's going on, he, um, 
He is going to... Well, anyways, that's their turn. He's going to uh, stand his ground, and then this one is going to run as fast as she can. She's going to double move on her turn. And let's see. Uh, he's going to shield wall. Uh, the other person is also going to shield wall. And then this person is going to attack Haftum. Nat 20. Oh, crap. Uh, half them, you take 10 points of damage. Come at me, sir. Um, nice. And, um, and then, uh, big woman here with the winged helm steps forward, uh, and she pulls out her great axe, and she has a wicked grin on her face. She starts swinging it toward, um, uh, toward, uh, Gerd. She needs a 15. Nice. She fails. <clears throat> and then, let's see. Uh, sorry, these tokens. It's hard to move them around. These two are going to attack Halver. That is certainly a hit. All right, four points of damage. And ooh, four He's points of one, damage. One hit point remaining. I think that is it for this turn. Um, let's see. What are the rules for being invisible? I know there are some. Combat. I believe I cannot be seen. Yeah. I, actually, I think that's not... That's something that like people were fussing about. Is it's not clear in the book. But I agree. I think if you're invisible, it is not the same as hiding or sneaking. I think invisible means you are invisible. I agree. Oh, yeah. Until you act. Yeah. That's the benefit of it. All right. So that's their turn. Back to Steve. Hey, hey, all right. With an excited bottle, he moves up and attacks this guy. Come on. Doctor. Be careful. He's impossible to hit. No problem. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> what do you see, Vorns? Alright, Vorns can attack this guy. For the normal. Come on, Vorn. That's the Jeez. spirit. <laughs> Alright, you got a bonus to that attack? No, it's just regular. No, you don't have a strength uh, but modifier? No. Oh, crap. Okay, that does not hit then. He's in shield wall. No. Oh, bummer. Wait, he is a... He's got a luck too, but I'm not going to roll that 20. Okay. He's when he breaks that, I'll give him a great job. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give Toothy thumb up. Alex. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's start with Halvar here. Halvar's going to hit the, uh, the female, here. female berserker over here again. Far left. That's a 16. That hits, I think. Uh, yeah, that hits. Six points of damage. Six points is enough to kill her. Alvar yells out in a bloody rage because he's barely clinging on to life. And Gerd, he's gonna... Let's try to slide him around a bit. There we go. Yeah, Gerd's gonna, Gerd's gonna swing uh, back at the leader of these of these all. Thirteen, that's a miss, I'm sure. Uh, Thirteen is a miss. <clears throat> All right. Um, Caleb. Well, I think I've got to... to... First off, Hafton's going to face down the immortal warrior over here. Does a 14 hit? A 14 uh, does not hit. Gaug's going to maintain his blocking position. Very well. Um, let's see. These uh, They're going to attempt to do slash attacks. The women are. Oof. A 21 hits for 3 damage. 
And uh, that is enough to kill the guy finally in the first rank. Now, they're not going to move because uh, this is pro proving a useful gauntlet for you all. Uh, <clears throat> so that's their turn. So he's going to move up, shield wall. These two, shield wall. Big woman, try to kill people. I hope that means good. Nice. Yay. And then lastly, um, double move as she sprints and she slams into some invisible object in the water. <laughs> I, uh, if I maintain my invisibility, how can I ethereally whisper? Oh, run. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make a uh, wisdom check to see if she takes that <laughs> as a sign from the gods. She passes. She's like, but she does. There's trickery here then. It's Loki of what? Don't, don't stab the trickery. She starts like <laughs> looking around in the water just in front of you, swings her axe, it splashes the water onto you, but uh, you know, and the axe just misses you and you, you back up. Um, and uh, let's see, that is their turn. Steve. Okay, so. Warren's content with what's going on over there, so he's going to move up and try to uh, spear the lady. Come on, do good. Hey, that's nice. okay. It's only one point, but it hits. I'm okay with that. That does hit. And then Velgarder is going to try to hit this guy here in the shield wall. Let's see. Boom. Oh, it was... It would have been, too, had it rolled to 17. Alas. All right, uh, Alex. All right, same as uh, this guy on the left who still remains. Is he also shield walling? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Hmm. I feel my thoughts here is that if Halvar stops up the assault, they the guy will swing back at him, and Halvar has but a single hit point, so I'm so. In lieu of other ideas I had here for Halvar, he's just going to keep swinging at the guy who's shield walled. Glorious end is a beautiful thing. Oh. Ah, two. Not even close. All right. Uh, Caleb. Oh, I still got Gerd's attack. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yes. Gerd, I believe in you. Gerd's swinging at the, at the leader once more. Nice. Nice. That hits. Ha. Ah. For a whopping oh oh she's what plus six both them a damage she uh yells in pain as blood flies up into the cold misty cavern space um <clears throat> all right uh caleb all right well uh can can hafton reach the leader who appears to be somewhat next to her? uh yeah yeah you can reach her yeah I'd like to stab her. Okay. It seems like that would improve her disposition. Well, she's a preserver, so maybe not. Either <laughs> way, uh, that's, uh, we're doing great over here. Uh, it turns out that you need more than strength to, to hit an enemy. Uh, Afton's learning a lot of important life lessons here. Uh, but with him, uh, Uh, successfully surviving another from some turns. I think I'd like to to have uh, Skalg earn some glory. I think I'd like to prance up and beer this uh, this mean leader lady in the back. All right. Do I gain any advantages from being invisible? Take it. Take it advantage. Yeah, on the attack. Oh my. Well, let's. Uh... Oh, sorry, I'll give, I'll give that to you. Oh, well, I'm not. I just got immediately confused. All right. Two dice rolls. Let's see. Does a 15 hit? Neither of them hit. All right. Well, you know, I think sometimes it's important to try. All right. Uh, let's see. The uh, <clears throat> They are able to act first. He's going to stay shield walled. He's going to stay shield walled. Um, he is going to attack Halvar. 
and give up his shield wall for the turn. Uh, Halvar no. does a 17 hit. Yes, it does. You take four damage. Halvar is now at negative three hit points. We so will meet again, Halvar. Actually, <clears throat> the death rules. Let's do the death rules. <laughs> Excuse me, hold on. Um... Let's see. Combat, actions, death. Death timer. Uh, what is your negative hit points at? Negative three. Uh, roll a d4 plus your con modifier. Ooh, okay. He's got a plus three to con. Ooh. Wow. Okay, this is his talent here then. You have five, five death saves, and um, on each turn, so you're unconscious. On each turn, you um, you have five turns for somebody to save you. Uh, if no one saves you, you die. And on each turn, if you get a nat twenty, you come back. But otherwise, you will die in five turns. So, all right, uh, unconscious. Does saving what, what's in top? involved in saving. Can anyone just go up and save him, or does it require special socks? Mm, yes. Uh, you can give first aid on a DC 15 intelligence check to keep them from dying, in fact. And anybody can do that. Uh, Alright, so uh, where were we? He was attacking. He's shield walling. She is going to attack um, Skalk, uh, who's right there. No, no, no. I can show you I'm quite heartless. She's going to attack uh, Gerd. <laughs> Gerd has to go. He's he's a threat. Oh, that's a hit for only one point. Nice. One point of damage. And her, her rage has run out, so she can't add anything to it. And then this person's going to run in, and she's going to attack Skalg. You hit alone. Fear wall. Oof. This is a 17 hit. I believe all of that does me. All right, five points of damage. That you... brings me to negative one. All right, roll a d4 and add your con modifier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or, or subtract it, as it were. <laughs> oh, no. So, listen, I, I, uh, I'm I great at this whole con thing. Uh, so. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> It's got, I was always a sickly It has child. a negative four. He was Skog already dead. dead. <laughs> he was kind of on his way anyway. I, this is I, the guy I, walking I around with a cough. Water. Pale. You me. <laughs> I was already... He <laughs> <laughs> was already washed. He was already washed. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, oh no, Skalg. Oh no. I was I was gonna go save Halvar, and instead I beat him to Valhalla. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's their turn. Now these women can act. Slash. He's got his ears stoppered, so they know to try to slash him. Ooh, got three hit points. Three hit points. Let's see if we get any more. Nope. And. Three hit points, and 17 doesn't hit, so minus three. He does take some damage from their claws as they scream. You can hear their screams echoing off the cavern walls. And we're back to Steve. Can I, uh, is Valgarder able to go around this guy and to go over here? Um, no. Okay. He's now, he's shield wall, so I'll actually say that he's not. So what you could do is uh, you could go like this way, you know, and go, try to go around and just hug the wall and go all the way around, however much movement that is. Okay. I think he'll go over here and kind of <laughs> be a little bit on top of Alvar, but... <laughs> all as right. He goes, so you're no fun. <laughs> comes over here and tries to do physical harm. Oh no. This gentleman. Nice. 
<laughs> All right, he's back, uh, but it will unconscious. But now, keep rolling, uh, Halvar, keep rolling your D20s for your five rounds, and if you get a 20, you get back up too. So there's that. But otherwise, you're unconscious and you're stabilized. Okay. So that's your turn. You took your action, and you got one more Viking, right? Yeah, he's going to do some do some stabbing from afar. Good safe distance. Oh. Nice. Three points of damage. Boom. She screams again. Um, it's starting to become unclear whose blood is whose as, they, as it flies around the narrow chamber. Um, Metal. Steam rolling off everyone's bodies as you uh, fight with each other. Um, Alex. Alright, I'm gonna roll that d20 for Halvar first. He's staying, he's staying uh, unconscious for the time being. And here's Gerd swing. Nice. Team connect. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, another casual one. <laughs> Seven points. Oh, so close. All right. Um, Caleb. I would like to shield wall and end my turn. All right. This woman is going to make a morale check. She fails and flees into the darkness, yelling uh, as her uh, her resolve cracks. And uh, you see this woman here. She she yells and she says, "Coward! We're here to redeem our bloodline." And she turns around, uh, and she's like barely alive. You can actually just blood running down her face. One of her arms no longer working. Nerves severed in places. Uh, and she just smiles through the blood uh, as she uh, she's going to keep attacking Gerd. She's not going to let uh, let this go. It's a um, vendetta at this point. Uh, Twenty for three damage. Gerd is now also on one hit point remaining. Uh, this one is going to attack Gerd because he sees that. Oh. No. Gerd, you can roll a d4 with plus your con. Four. Nice. Okay, so you get four turns. And let's see, Gerd is unconscious. I'm going to kind of just get him out of the way, but uh, let's see here. And then this one is going to attack Haftum. 19 for eight damage. Oh. It, it, it's a 20 AC with a shield wall. Ah, nice. He fails against your shield wall. Uh, this one's going to start attacking because he realizes how desperate things are. He also fails against uh, these women. And the women get to attack. His AC is lower now. His AC is lower now. 16 hits for 3 damage. Uh, yeah. And one more woman is available here to fight. She misses. Okay. Uh, I think there's a... That's it. She's fleeing. So, let's see. She's frightened. And I think that she's going to flee all the way out of here as far as she can get. So, so she goes this way. And that brings us back to Steve. All right. So Valgarder is going to turn his attention to the lady here. I'm, I'm stealing the glory. Nah, 20 hits for seven damage. Describe how you kill the Viking shield maiden of, uh, right. of Garatha, the last descendant of the Sea Wolf King. Right, so he was about to swing at the guy in front of him, and he looks at her and goes, oh, it's you! And then just kind of, like, bonk on the head. The same thing as last time, just straight chop down through the uh, through the helm. 
She just looks and then at pops you. It out, like, not even his whole day, and looks at the next guy and goes, ha, <laughs> They're going to make a uh, morale check at disadvantage. They pass. They are here to die today. Warren's doing a stab at this fella, but no. That misses. That's that for me. He is going to flee, and they're going to get opportunity attacks as they as they flee. Ah. Ah. Ooh. Ah. What the? He gets away. Yeah. His perspective must be so wild because he's just watched all his friends die through this wall of like ethereal women. Yeah. <laughs> He was brave he until that last moment. He saw he saw his like clan, the the chosen lead, the future leader of his clan, just have his, her head skull hewn open in two parts, and it's like there's no reason to fight. You know, there's nothing else left. But you still have two left. Uh, you said the last, uh, your second character missed, Steve. Yeah. Okay, uh, Alex. Uh, I got no characters. Aha, uh, Caleb. You can roll your I d20s. Would, oh, good point. I would like to maintain my shield wall uh, and ask the the ladies: Is there is there something that you can can do for our our wounded comrades? Uh, yeah, good point. Actually, I'll I'll have them resolve that right away to see if they can. They can do basically the same thing you can tend to the wounded I'm sorry I'm doing this this is this benefits them more anyway though but I did that wrong but all right so gird you're back uh, you're unconscious actually is what it is well, who yeah and then let's see Skalg is dead gird was already unconscious or no he was already unconscious and and yeah. was stabilized he was not stabilized yet. He was just unconscious. Okay, you are now. You're now stabilized. And then they'll move in to help fight, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, so what else do you do on your turn, uh, Caleb? That's uh, that's uh, shield wall. That's what I got. All right. Um, let's see. It's going to be their turn. They're going to start taking uh, morale checks on every one of their turns now. He fails. Uh, half them, you can, you can make an opportunity attack. Would that break my shield wall? It would on this turn. So at the end of the turn, I'll it's say it's a little academic. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's let's go for it. Let's redeem myself. There's a thirteen hit. It it doesn't, but I'll. Uh... Was well, it a hit from behind in this case with like a plus two maybe? Hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah, he uh, he flees as well. Uh, uh, you better run. <laughs> <laughs> I will meet check. you again in your dreams. Let's see, Volgerder, you can also make an opportunity attack as the other one flees. Oh, here it comes. Uh, 15 misses, I believe. I think. Uh, yeah. No, it hits. For six oh. points of damage. Okay. Alright. He, uh, he howls in pain as, as he flees in terror. Um, so, three of them of, uh, Gandrun fled, but, uh, their shield maiden lays dead in the water. You're, this whole ground is, is, it's as if red dye and paint were painted across the snowy sands of this place as it is covered in blood. Let's see. A monochrome canvas of violence. Um the uh, the women they go back to the water. I'm going to move all these dead bodies out of the way so we can see. 
except our fallen heroes here, of course. And since they have time, they'll try to, um, they'll try to help. Is everybody stabilized, actually? I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, they'll go back to the water. Oops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> well, they're taking Gerd. <laughs> <laughs> they, if you let them, they will take Skalk into the waters. Or you can burn him and keep him. You tell them we want to keep Skalk's body, they'll let you. Oh, I, feel yeah. like, I feel like burning's how that's got to go, yeah. I don't, All right. I don't know that letting strange women leave with our friend's corpse is a... Uh... Can't let them get away with that cloak and a corpse. Three, three <laughs> of you have survived. And so each of you, uh, they produce... A, uh, a jelly glowing orb to each of the three surviving uh, conscious people. Ooh. Jelly orb. Reason dictates that we probably shouldn't eat this, but so far, eating things from suspicious people has worked out great for us. They say, thank you for bringing vengeance for our sister. You are a worthy heir the sea wolf king and then they disappear into the waters epic is the uh, jelly orb like an edible thing it is questionably looking edible looks like it might be for that purpose afton would like to eat his jelly orb you eat it and it tastes like gross tasteless jelly uh, but then you like feel pain in your neck oh your neck like cracks and, and then you feel something flapping and you reach back and you have gills. <laughs> Elgarder and Vorn look at each other, shrug, and roll. If these are freshwater gills, this would be really unfortunate. <laughs> so if Elgarder can now attack from the air, from the land, and from the water. Elgarder <laughs> is inevitable. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, if you return for your prize, uh, uh, the, uh, the Drelger King, Skorgald, the Sea Wolf King, rises again, uh, the bones cracking uh, from being frozen in steel for so many ages. He, uh, he comes over, uh, who was it that slain uh, his descendant? I can't remember. It was uh, Steve uh, Valgardur, was it not? Valgardur, yeah, he did. He, uh holds out a silvery axe with nine open eyes that every so often will blink. And uh, he holds it out to you. Alright, he, he, he takes it and he kind of bows it and lifts it up over his head. Alright, this is a plus one great axe. Um, <laughs> its nine eyes also do something, but you're not sure what yet. But, um... All right, so you uh, you return. Um, too much fanfare and Valthus and um, triumphant with the axe, and uh, also having convinced uh, the people of um, uh, of Scargat. That you uh, you purified the seers, so they don't know yet. You know, uh, so you all are heroes all around. The people of Scargat spend some time in your village. Now, Valgardur, you were approached by. Uh, it isn't long. You maybe you go out to take a piss during the celebration. <laughs> probably. probably have your axe with you, um, and. Um, Let's see here, Valgardur. We're supposed to get big. back to the, uh... Unless you, you want yeah, to be yeah. the king of all Viker. Well, well, I don't think... So. He wouldn't even thought of that. He would just... Like, he's dumb as a stump. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, a big magic axe. Give back to a lady now. <laughs> yeah, you offer it, and she uh, she comes out into the snow uh, while you're taking a piss, and she not shakes her head, and she says, 
You know this is not how this works, Falco. And she draws out her own blade. <laughs> it's kind of looking back. Um, <laughs> give, give me a minute. Pull your pants up first. Yeah. <laughs> you shake it, you know, and like <laughs> shimmy a little, and <laughs> turn around. Looks to reach for the axe, and then kind of stops, puts up his hand, washes his hands in snow, <laughs> hats them off, dusts the food particles, the foam from his face, <laughs> shakes the the mutton off out of his beard and stuff. And then he kind of picks up the axe and he looks at her and says, "So do we like switch the the weapons or?" She rushes towards you and uh, slices to attack. I'll say that she has surprise. Is she ever? <laughs> Does oh, a uh, 16 hit? Uh, yes. You take 8 damage. Ooh. Now, wait, let's look at... <laughs> we level up? <laughs> uh, um, have you leveled up yet? Uh, just a second level when we... Uh... Now you started at second level, so that would be yeah. yeah, yeah. So yes, you would go to level three, and okay. al and also you you know on the trip back you'll gain some hit points. I'm looking to see combat. Who is he? Does he have any luck, perhaps, for having gotten the gotten the axe? Oh yeah, that too. Totally take a luck token. He's max hit points. Awesome. Nice. Okay, and uh, I'm looking to see. I can't remember how you get your... Uh... Oh, yeah, you have to sleep, which I'll say you do. This game, I remember now. Yes. I'm sorry. I run a bunch of games. Okay. Uh, yes. In this game, as, as soon as you sleep, you get all your hit points back. There you go. So you're good to go. He immediately has a nap mid-battle. Mid <laughs> no, I mean, sorry. Yeah, like on the trip back, you know, obviously from the cave... You know, it's like a couple of day journey, three day journey. You're gonna you're gonna get some sleep and you're good to go. So you said I better fix this up. You said this is a oops, guy here. Um, a great axe. Uh, yeah, a great axe uh, plus one. So you, um, I'll tell you, a great axe does one d ten. So you do one d one d ten plus one, plus your strength, obviously. Does it add anything to being two-handed, or...? Uh... I think it's two-handed, naturally. Like, you you have to wield it with two hands, so... Yeah, I was, wasn't sure if it... Alright, so... You can also appeal to the eyes to see if they do something. <laughs> and you don't know... I mean, you know. Who knows, but... Hey, eyes, what do you do? Yeah, Alright. Uh, they, they blink, one of them does, and then, um... If you if you ask that, uh, let me see here. Um, I'd like to take a moment to point out that the Jarl and Valgrader are both on this guy's shoulders, like they're his angel and devil. So, um, <laughs> so you have nine eyes, and some of them blink every so often. This one, it blinks when you ask that question and then stops. And then you're filled with a, a knowledge. You see before you uh, the entire life's existence of... Um, um, yeah. So of Signia, the shield maiden, the, the leader of Althus, it's Jarl. You see her entire life flash before her, your eyes. You see Ooh. every name that she was ever called and the name that someday she'll have in the afterlife. You now have her true name. And um, that eye remains closed when you call upon the eyes. And you now have advantage on all attack rolls against her. Oh. All right. First attack does ten points of damage. Uh, you kill her in one hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> How did? You, yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she is unworthy of the axe, and uh, she slumps over and dies in the snow. And um, <clears throat> to this, uh, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but. Um, 
the seer Igrid, the old man, stood there. And he was like, I did not foresee this. I was wrong. The runes were wrong. And he uh, holds up his hands and he says, Jarl, forgive me. All right, he kind of... So when she swipes, kind of cuts across him, and he, like, is surprised and does this, like... Lifts the axe up, tries to spin to get out of the way, but then at the same time comes down, so he just kind of, like, funk, turns her in half, and then he's standing there, like, in shock because he didn't expect this to happen. Yeah. People come outside <laughs> in the night and see you victorious over the body of their former Jarl that, uh, and now holding the axe as well. So he's kind of standing there a little shocked, looking at everybody. Looking at the uh, the seer. What is he there? Goes up to him oh, with the ahead. axe, and he, he like pats him on the head. I'm going to go get drunk. <laughs> what does everybody else do? Gerd Gerd starts up a cheer, a cheer for for our companion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he's already like drinking. He just kind of turns around and gives a thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, everybody starts to cheer, um, and um, and well, um, thus begins the the reign of King Volgador, King of the Andric Isles, who uh, unwittingly or not uh, has uh, by merely holding an axe and by its strange powers and the influence of the seers would see more bloodshed as a civil war comes to the Andric Isles. After all, uh, Skargat is convinced that the seers are evil. And so, unfortunately, the moot would never happen. And everything would change in the Isles. But at the end, there would be a new fervor in the people of the Andrigals. After all, they needed to. Uh, many of the villages are burned and destroyed and uh, they set sail to the eastern reaches of, uh, of the island of Albion. All in force this time. And bloodshed and death and destruction reigned on the people of Albion in its northern reaches for that season. And thus uh, ends our tale. Awesome.